Hey guys, in this lesson, let's talk about how we can create Firebase references. Meaning that in your Firebase account, in your Firebase database, or in your Firebase storage. Now, the storage is the place where you can store videos, files, images, any kind of like file, heavy file in your Firebase database, meaning the real-time database. It's mostly for store uh, numbers, text, and strings, and those stuff that you want to have real-time, very fast, incredibly fast. So we talk about how to uh, create your Firebase reference, meaning the address to access your database and storage. And number two, we talk about how to upload photos, how to upload images into your Firebase. This can be used for your any kind of app, literally, that you can use to upload. We will use to upload your profile picture, to upload the photos that user upload in your app, any kind of things that we will do. So I hope that you enjoy this and let's get to work. Let's go ahead in your Firebase database. Let's look at again our database structure here. In the last training, I talked about that database in data in Firebase is structured in JSON format. It means that basically it is dictionary, all a bunch of dictionaries with key values pair, right? So in order to change anything, so that's the first one, how the data is structured. The second one, in order to change a data, whether you want to create some new data or you want to delete some data, you're going to need a reference to the database. So a reference is the exact location or the address of some data inside the database right here. So if, for example, you have the users, the key, it goes down the key to the UID one Dukchuan, then you can change my username or website or profile picture URL, those kind of things, right? So now in the last video, we'll talk about that when we want to change that thing, we have to create a new reference, we have to uh, call the set values, those kind of things, right? But the problem is, whenever you want to do that, whenever you want to change something, then you have to call very, very repetitive code, something like FIR database, if you want to use database, and then you do dot database, and then you do dot reference, and then maybe you want to go down the path, then you just have the child, and then you just put in the child over here, okay? So this thing is going to give us that reference. Okay, follow along. So number one, we talk about how data is structured Right? How about data is structure that is in JSON? Number two, we talk about reference in the database. Number three, let's talk about the set value. Okay? So the set value, when we have the child here, okay? For example, we have the users. So let's set out our users like this users. And then how about I want to change, I want to set this thing, I want to delete the first user. This one. So we have the UID one Dictron. So I have slash UID one the trend like this. Or you guess what? You can add another child into this thing. And then we have UID one the trend like this. Or you can use the backslash. And then if you want to set the value, you just have to count set value like this. Now in the case that you want to set this value, for example, I want to set this thing back into something like some value, a string, a string called some value. So let's run the app. Okay, I just want to review a little bit and then we'll go ahead and we'll create some awesome code here and then I think you will love it very much, especially when you go and use that in your Firebase app. So we change that and notice what happens. Our key for UID1 Dukchuan here is changed into some value. Now, what if I want to delete that? What if I want to delete that, right? This UID one to try the whole key. All I have to do is I change it into set value nil. So let's run it once again. Okay, again, all the code that we're writing right now is in the finish launching with options. So that is why every time it just runs, it's changed like this. And then I delete that because now the key is nil, there's no point of storing the key value pair. Because for a dictionary, whenever you access a key that doesn't have any value, then the value is nil automatically. Make sense? Okay, so 
that has been set now for example i want to access instead of the instead of this user's uid to channel one i want to access something like uid to tracy like this so we have to do again if our database dot database dot reference dot child like this and then use users like that and then how about i am quicker i'm not a professional so i use uid to tracy like that right and then we can set value into something like nil right we want to delete that or you change the value now this thing work that's absolutely okay but if you look at this this whole thing right here it's very repetitive and it's kind of like very boring to do so what i want to do for you right now is we are going to create some enums that these enums are going to help us to kind of like structure our reference okay is kind of like a helper enums so let's delete all of those code and we don't need that don't delete the fir app dot configure because it is going to configure the firebase so now in the model let's right click have a new file and then let's use this as a sewer file and then we have let's call this thing firebase reference like this and then we create that call cool. and then let's import firebase because whenever we want to use firebase we have to import firebase the framework let's make some space here cancel the project some space okay all right now the number one i want to do is i want to have the reference to our real-time database so enum database reference like this oops database reference like that you can call that anything you want and then i want to have several cases case number one is the root reference case number two is the users now the users here i want to have something like the uid of the users to be the standard um what is that the associated values okay so the user whenever you, the user passes into this we can use this uid cool okay let's have a mark here called public for the ui uh, for public access so we have something like a reference okay so let's have a reference method that will return for us the typed is fir database reference like this okay and then this thing will somehow return for us something like a reference to our database make sense so this thing is going to return for us the uh, the reference to our database depending on the cases depending on the cases so for example later on you have like a bunch of posts in your um, social media so you have post with something like uid or something like that whatever you want to structure or you have a bunch of photos you want to do that over there even though the photos here i'm going to suggest you to do that in another enum and we'll talk about that in just a minute okay the next thing let's have the root reference of our database so here I'm, because the root reference we are going to have let's have the root reference to be um fir database reference like this right and this thing is going to return fir database dot oops return fir database dot database like this and then we just return the reference okay now let's calculate our reference for this guy by accessing um all the associated values and then we're going to append the path to this thing okay we'll calculate the path so for example you have that URL, and then you have the users and then you have like uid one duction and then you have username those kind of things right so we're going to calculate this path okay so let's have a private var file path which is a string and then we we'll switch on ourselves because we are a enum remember we are an enum so we can switch on ourselves so that we have different cases here cool then if it is the case of root reference we are just going to return let's just return an empty string and then if it is the case of users let's just then i'm going to bind the uid value of the associated values of this enum case okay so we have let uid here for us to use and then here i'm going to return 
like that and because we want to access the users at that UID so we just have to use users goes down there and then the UID cool so returns users slash and then we use string interpolation and then UID make sense so we have two cases here if it is the case of root reference we return an empty string if it is a case of users we just append that now for example what if you want to have a bunch of other things what if you have like um how about username right so you can do that too okay or actually you can even do the uid here instead of uid you can just have that as a path so that the user can put in that backslash thing just like this okay all right now let's calculate our reference over here so the reference let's have root um you know what i'm going to switch on ourselves too so switch on ourselves the enum if it is the case of the root reference if it is the case of root reference then we are going to return the root reference like this okay because if it is the default case it means that uh, any other case that is not the root reference that we have to obtain this path we just have to count returned root reference dot child and then we obtain the path make sense now this thing is going to save you tons of time because you can just append and you can just add any other cases in the other um, database access point reference into this enum and then you just use this reference pretty cool huh now why is it the question is why is it we have to switch on here why is it we just have to do this because what if the root reference is, is like we just return this whole thing right so for example i'm going to just cut this thing copy paste over here what if we just return this whole thing now the problem is if we return this whole thing if this is the case of the root reference then we're going to call the root reference whatever that is and then we'll paint the child of an empty string now just by the rule that the sdk is implemented if you pass in the child is an empty string or some string that has some weird character some weird character that is a URL that doesn't allow, then Firebase will not uh, allow you to, and your app will crash. Okay, and then it will give you a very descriptive information uh, error message in the console. Cool. Okay, now let's test this thing out because whenever we write any code for our backend, we should test that. So we'll go back into the app delegate. How about we want to have um yeah let's have another user and then we change uh, the uid okay so we have we want something like this we want to have uid uid 3 and then we have something like uh, abc and then the value let's have something to be uh, what is that whiteboard just because i'm okay see that so i'm going to delete this thing delete that and let's write that in code so that we have that value here notice that we don't have that here yet so let's have um, database reference right the enum dot users because we want to have the users and then we just have to pass in the uid 3 abc right and then we have to call the reference and then we have to count the set value so that we have the set value white board like this cool so let's run the project and see if this thing is changed here we go this is our app and boom we have that thing immediately see that it's kind of very instantly if you think about it okay now a little code challenge for you now i want to have another thing called um how about admin the value is um random stupid guy <laughs> okay uh, you can have anything over here okay oh you know what let's do something awesome together so i want to have a key value pair okay for the user so it, it's going to be like this go i want you to do this so we have the users right and then from these users we have another one called username something like admin 
and then we have the UID to be un admin. Okay, so it means that you have to save the value here to be a dictionary. This is a little bit strange, but can you figure it out? Just give it around three minutes. After three minutes, go back with me, and then we'll do it together. Okay? So all I ask you to do, I'm sorry. This is the users with the key is admin. Okay, and then we have the value is this thing. Cool? Yeah? Okay, so give it a try and let me know. Do it. Okay, give it at least three seconds. I'm sorry, three minutes. Do it now. I think my Xcode just crashed. So let me reset my Xcode. So do it now in the meantime. Did you do it? Here we go. I just recover my Xcode. I think that is the one. Oh no, it's not. So do it. In the meantime, I'm going to find that project. Here we go. Did you do it? Okay, so it's my turn. Now we want to structure that thing, right? So we want to structure that admin, the key, and then we have this thing. So all we have to do is we do database reference, database reference dot users. UID is, uh, what is that? Admin, right? And then we set the reference. Now you might think that, huh, we still have to type in this thing in. Yeah, but think about it. It will save us a lot of time and we can control all the reference in our database in one place. Because what if you're going to have a lot more complicated database structure, data structure? Then you have to think about it. That every time you, you want to change something, you want to, um, Add another, add another um, layer or we call it tree or branch in your database. You don't want to be like random all over the place. Okay. So now let's go back into here. And then we set the value. So the value here, what is that value? So let's call it let's rain admin value to be a dictionary. That's all you have to do. So you just have to use a dictionary over here. We have the username is an admin. And then we have what UID is admin again. Go on. So the, we set the value. Guess what? We can set the value admin value because it is a dictionary. We can set any value here. Literally, the type is any. Okay. So let's run the project and see what it looks like. It will set this thing over again, but that's okay. And what's that? Here we go. Boom, see that? So we have this thing. All right, pretty awesome. So now let's talk about um, the next thing. Let's, I'm going to delete all this thing. We just test that thing. So let's talk about another one. That is, how can we, how can we save images to our Firebase database, okay? And also before we do that, before we save images, we need the reference to our storage. So if you look at the storage over here, we have the file and we also have kind of like the data structure, all of the reference, those kind of things, just like our database, but it is in a different database, the storage database. It is not real time. It will not be kind of like what we call reactive programming. It will just later on, we'll talk about how we can observe the value reactively. So it means that the value will be synchronized immediately. The storage will not be like that. The storage is not data uh, real time. Okay. So let's have our enum for the. I'm going to call this thing FIR stand for Firebase image. Okay, because it doesn't have one class like that. So let's have that. I'm sorry. This thing is storage. Storage reference like this. F not FIR, don't prefix that with that, okay? And here we just have a case of root, and then we case of profile images, like this. And then we have a function for our reference. We'll return FIR storage reference, like this. And here we'll return something, okay? And then we have, let's have private var base reference to be FIR, or let's have 
private var root reference to be FIR storage reference. Pay attention that this is not FIR database reference, it is FIR storage reference. And then we return FIR storage dot storage FIR storage um, right dot storage dot reference like this okay and then let's have another one let's have the path so var path is a string here and then we have switch on ourselves and then we do case root reference we return an empty string if it is the case of profile images we return profile images cool all right so here the reference we will switch on ourselves like this if it is the case of the root reference then we return root ref if it is the case let's if it is the case of default meaning that any other case we just return the root ref child with the child of the path okay of our storage database huh the default case let's make sure that we have everything is set up No, I don't want to have a break. I want the default. Okay, so you succeeded. Cool. So now let's save an image before we ever do anything. So let's have an image. Let's have a new file here, a script file, and this is going to have be an FIR image file. Okay. So this file, all we have to do is give it an image. And then how about we will shrink down the image so that we can save it more efficiently and then we are going to save that image into our Firebase database. Cool. So let's have import UI kit because we're going to need an image and import Firebase. And here we have a class called FIR image like this. Okay. Okay. Now let's have the image to be a UI image. It is required. And then we have download URL. The URL is that we can download this link. And then we have download link. How about download URL string to be a string like that. And then we have the reference to this image to be FR storage reference like that. So this is all the properties the public API that we need for this guy and then whenever we want to init this thing it is we just have to init that with an image like this and then self the image to be our image and then all the other things will be automatically nil now let's have a method for our save func save profile image for our user UID is a string with the completion is a closure. Now, why is it? Why is it do we need a closure? Let me type it in and then we're going to talk about it, okay? So the completion here, we have to use escaping because we're going to escape that whenever this, uh, escape out of the function whenever we complete that um, download thing. So we have error is the parameter and then we have the void like this okay now let's talk about this why do we need a completion handler over here so this completion handler if you don't know about that um, a closure only means is that it is a function in Swift and you can pass around that function just like a variable and the function here this closure will be executed whenever we done saving this profile image because if you think about it, an image can be around like 500 megabytes, 500 kilobytes to several megabytes, right? And it will not be automatically just like you save a link or text. It will be, it will take a few seconds or worst, if the network is really slow, it will take a few minutes or 
it can it it can never exist at all because there's a network error there can be a database error there can be a phone error whatever that is right so we want to have a mechanism so that whenever we done saving the profile image or whenever we got an error saving the profile image we are going to call this completion so that we have a comeback mechanism okay so let's have let's a resized image let's resize our image into image and we call the method called resized now this resized is not like a uh, built-in ui image in, uh, method because i'm going to have kind of like cheating here let's have a private extension just for this class called ui image for the ui image okay we extend the method we extend the functionalities of the ui image and then here i'm going to have the method called resized which returns another image and then let's calculate the width the height the ratio so let's the height to be a cg float of how about uh, by standard we do that 1000 point 1000 pixels and then let's have the ratio to be our self dot size dot width over self dot size dot height now why is this self the self here is not this FRR image the self here is this ui image because we are extending the functionalities of this ui image okay so when we call image that resized it means that the self here is this image the object of the ui image object or instance okay and then let's calculate our width to be height times the ratio cool next thing let's calculate a new size so let's new size to be a cg size with a width of the width with the height of height and then we want i want to have the rectangle new rectangle that we are going to, to put the new image inside this rectangle because um let's just have that okay cg right with the x position is zero y zero width and height now in order to resize this image in order to resize this image all we have to do is using ui graphics um and then we kind of like we draw a new context okay number one we're going to need a context it's kind of like a canvas okay kind of like a canvas then you would draw the new sized the newly sized image on the canvas cool and then the last step is you will get the new size image into a new variable all right and then you close the canvas that's pretty much it so four steps okay so here number one the context the canvas so we do ui graphics begin image context like this and then we have the size we pass in the new size so imagine that is that we have a huge or just a little small canvas in front of us so we have a new canvas here and then now we want to draw that thing okay so we do self which is our image so self dot draw in the rectangle okay and then we pass in this rectangle so new rectangle and then we get the image so let's get the image let's resize the image to be ui graphics get image from the current image context <laughs> it's kind of a mouthful i know but it's that all it works so we get the resized image using the method ui graphics get image from current image context and then we close the canvas so how can we we can close the canvas yeah we just use ui graphics and image context it's okay if you don't know about that i don't remember this code by heart okay and then we return the resized image let's ungrab that cool all right so that's how you resize the image i hope that this extension here will be helpful for you then you can use that in the future okay so now we have the resized image when we save the profile picture so that we don't have to like upload the whole 10 megabytes of the new iphone camera yeah, because mostly all 
uh, images on the web. It's or especially on phones or apps. It's not that high resolution. Okay, so now we have the resized image. Uh, let's have turn that image into our data. So let's image data into UI image JPEG representation of the image. You can argue that how about we put that as PNG because what if the user have some like uh, weird was that transparent image then the JPEG is going to turn that into white. Yeah, you can do that. That's okay. There's not much of a different um, in terms of size because we already, we already resized that. So resize the image and then how about compression is 0 0.9. Okay. So now let's have the next thing is we have to do this reference in order to save that, right? Remember to save something into Firebase, whether it is the database or the storage. Number one, you have to get the reference. Number two, you save that data to the reference. Okay. So number one, get the reference. Let's have ref equals to storage reference, not FIR storage reference, but storage reference, because that is the enum that we just created a minute ago. Sorry, guys. Okay, so let's have storage reference dot profile images dot reference, and we'll paint the child of the user UID like this. Now, this is why it means that each user will only have one profile picture. For this profile, images inside our storage reference, storage database, like that. Okay, and then whenever we want to download the user UID picture, uh, profile picture, we just have to use this reference, and then we call some method to download it. Go, cool. I will show you that too. Okay, so now let's have the download URL string to be the reference dot description. Okay, and then we save that data to the reference. So in order to save the data, this thing is a little bit different from our usual database, real-time database. Remember, the database, the real-time database, you just have to call ref.setValue, like this. Okay? But that is for the real-time database, which is mostly string and numbers and uh, dictionaries, pretty much text, because that is JSON. But this is data. This is still zeros and ones, but that's a lot. So we have to call it ref dot put the data. Okay, put upload data, and then we have some metadata. Okay, and then um, I believe that I actually like to use put upload data metadata, and then we use that thing. Okay, so that we have a completion handler like that, and then we have put the data is image data. Like that, let's ungrab that because, so how about uh, if let image data to be like this, and then we put it inside here. Okay, so we delete that thing. The media data, the media data here is, let's put that as nil, and the completion, press enter, like this. Okay, and then inside here we have the media data, and then we have the error. And then this error, let's just call inside this here, call the completion error. So it means that when it's done, if it has an error or not, it will just pass it in that error. It can be nil, it means that pretty much everything is successful. If it is not nil, then we have an error. Cool? Uh, resized, a function, resized. Oh, this is D, like that. Yeah, I think that it should be sized like this because it is a function. Cool. All right, so now let's test this thing and then we'll move on to the last one. The most important thing is the user class. So we talk a lot about in this video so far. I know this has been long, but it is the most work. Trust me, this training right here is the heaviest work ever for you in this whole course. So let's have testing our uh, thing over here. I'm going to do that using, um, how about we have my, my picture over here, Duke, okay? So let's have that, app delegate. Let's have, um, let's image, let's FIR image, to be FIR image, like this, with an image, and we just have UI image, named is 
Dirk, like this. Cool. Um, let's ungrab that thing because it can be optional, right? And then how about we call it fr image dot save profile picture? Oops, coming out. I don't want that. Okay, so save profile picture. How about we save that thing into um, like just some random one? Okay, so Dirk to be our username, and then the completion handler. Just press enter. We put out the error, and then if the error, whatever error is, I'm going to print out the error. Up uploading image like this, okay, and then we print out the error like that. Two lines, and you can upload the whole image into your database. Cool. So let's run the project and see what it looks like. Exciting. Okay. I know it's. A lot of code, but from now on, all you have to do is two lines of code. Oh, permission denied. You see this thing? It immediately shows us message code is 403. And you can, if you access that, you have the message. Permission denied. It means that we didn't change the rules of the storage of here. Now, this is dangerous. So remember that later on, we have to, uh, later on, we have to um, change the pack. Okay? So, over here, if request, let's change that request the no is equals equals to no. So all you have to do is go to storage and then rules and then request the no equals equals to no. Publish. It means that because right now we didn't upload our image yet. I'm sorry, we didn't authenticate the users yet. But in order to authenticate users, because we know that we are going to have to save the profile picture, we know that we're going to have to save the user's information. So things like username, things like um, profile picture, those kind of things, right? So now let's run the project and see what it looks like. Go back into file, okay? Run the project here. And then it will not show immediately here because it is not real-time database. So all you have to do is refresh your browser. And if it is exists, then it should be over here. Here we go. See that? And boom. We have the name here is profile images. And you see that the slash over here. If you click into that, you see our child reference is Duke. And then if you goes over here, okay, the file location, you have a download URL. This download URL, you can use that to download uh, using in iOS. So let's click into here, okay, and then I'm going to paste that into a new tab like this, and boom. You see this thing? Click into the download image, and yeah, we can basically see the image. Now, the image is blurry right now because it's already bl blurry right front. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. We just talked about how to upload your profile picture about Firebase reference and all of those awesome stuff. I know this is kind of like quite struggling and just some new stuff to you. And frankly, when I just got started to learn about Firebase and all of those database stuff, it's just all new. And maybe you are experiencing that too. So I hope that you just know that it's just the process, you know. When you learn something new, the learning curve will be something like this. And then when you get quite comfortable with that, you kind of like know how to drive the car, right? So when the first time you know, uh, you learn to drive a car, I'm like, okay, I have to use like this. And how about the real mirror? How about the back mirror? How about like the brake and the accelerator? All of those stuff. And then this kind of there. And we're just all over the place. But that's okay. The more we practice with it, the more we'll be like a master, right? So it's just like we chill out and we can use any tool that you want to do. So please know and trust the process. I'm walking you through this step by step, taking longer than it should be. But the, at the end of the day, what matters is you know the tool and you can build any kind of app with that tool as possible. So I hope that you enjoy this lesson. In the next one, we talk about how to create your user class so that we can create users, save the user's information into Firebase, and then we go into the next one. So I hope you enjoy this and see you in the next one.